Good morning to the people of God. Good morning, Canaan family, and good morning to you who may be watching from somewhere around uh, the world. Uh, we thank our God for not only blessing us with yet another day, uh, but we thank him for this uh, very special uh, day uh, in the life of uh, Canaan Baptist Church of Christ, where we are uh, celebrating our uh, 90th uh, church uh, anniversary. And so from the time during the Depression right up until uh, this very uh, time, uh, presently God has been with us uh, through all of the ups and downs and uh, uh, all kinds of uh, controversies and uh, good times and not so good times, God has been with us and kept this uh, old ship of Zion uh, afloat uh, when so many have fallen uh, by the wayside. So we are especially uh, grateful uh, to God uh, upon today. Uh, but initially, uh, we're uh, grateful that you all have uh, decided to uh, tune in uh, this morning and to uh, hear what God has to uh, say to us. And so because God has been so uh, gracious and kind to us, uh, let us now uh, look to him uh, for his blessing. God, our Father, it's in the blessed name of your son, Jesus, uh, that we humbly come this morning, uh, thankful for yet uh, another day. Uh, we thank you, Lord, uh, that continually you are uh, with us and uh, you are our God and we are striving uh, to be the people that you have called us uh, to be. Uh, we pray, Lord, even for that one who yet doesn't know you and the pardon of their sins. And Lord, we pray that uh, all that we do and say uh, as your word uh, goes forth and does not return uh, void uh, may not come short of bringing you glory. Uh, for it's in the blessed name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ, we do pray with great thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. And so our lesson uh, today is uh, <clears throat> coming from uh, Paul's uh, epistle or letter uh, from the uh, book of uh, Galatians. Our lesson is entitled Freedom and the Law. Freedom and the Law, from the third chapter of the uh, uh, book of uh, Galatians, uh, and beginning at the 18th uh, verse uh, through the 29th uh, verse. That's Galatians 3, verses 18 to 29. Now, Paul uh, happened to have written uh, the, uh, the book or the letter or the epistle, whichever you choose to uh, call it, uh, during his uh, third missionary journey as he's traveling through uh, Macedonia, uh, somewhere between uh, A.D. and 55 uh, and 57. Uh, that's pretty much around uh, the same time that Paul uh, wrote his letter to the church at uh, Rome, uh, which he uh, penned from uh, uh, Corinth, as we had a, a few lessons uh, from the uh, book of uh, Romans, that great doctrinal uh, book. Uh, now, Paul is uh, principally concerned uh, with this uh, writing of the uh, letter uh, to the church at Galatia with the controversy that was surrounding um, Gentile Christians and uh, the Mosaic uh, law. And of course, this was a time when the majority of uh, Christians uh, were, uh, were Jewish. Uh, and of course, the, um, the main thrust of the controversy had to do with the uh, uh, Jews feeling that the Gentiles really couldn't become uh, Christians unless they actually became Jews uh, first, uh, such that the males would have to be circumcised and the like. Uh, and then, of course, that uh, came to a head prior um, uh, to the writing, um, but um, there was a Jew, uh, it was called the Jerusalem Council 
uh, which met in AD uh, 50. If you notice, as I've mentioned before, that we always uh, don't say the number first and then AD after, uh, basically because uh, AD is uh, Latin uh, short for Anno Domine, the year of our Lord. Uh, and so we always make sure that we say AD uh, before whatever uh, number. Uh, that being uh, said, let us now uh, read our lesson of, uh, of Scripture, uh, beginning at the um, 18th uh, verse of the uh, third uh, chapter through the uh, 29th uh, verse. So if you have your Bibles uh, handy, give you a second or so to uh, to turn uh, and then we can uh, we can read together or if you just want to listen that's uh, fine as well as Galatians uh, 3 uh, beginning at the 18th uh, verse for if the inheritance be of the law it is no more of promise but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's Galatians 3 verses 18 through 29. So Paul uh, uh, begins um, by talking about the um, what the law uh, is and uh, the difference between uh, the law uh, and what would ultimately uh, be um, God's uh, grace uh, through our belief uh, that was able to uh, save us and uh, such that we could then be part of uh, God's uh, family of uh, faith. Uh, there were a lot of uh, false uh, teachers um, that were adding uh, confusion um, to newborn uh, believers uh, about what God actually uh, requ uh, required uh, to be uh, uh, part of his uh, family. Um, uh, and uh, as I mentioned a little while ago, uh, the controversy set us principally centered around uh, the uh, Jewish Christians. Remember, the majority of Christians uh, at this time uh, 
keeping in mind that uh, being Jewish and uh, Christian is not mutually exclusive. Um, even today, we have uh, the plenty of uh, Messianic um, uh, con congregations uh, where they are uh, Jews as well as uh, Christians. But um, the Jews at that time um, really were trying to hinder um, the word of God uh, from going uh, to uh, Gentiles such that the Gentiles would then uh, believe the word of God as it was preached uh, by Paul and others and then accept uh, Christ uh, by faith. Um, now Paul is actually arguing that uh, uh, God gave Abraham um, a, a promise uh, about 430 years even before uh, God gave the uh, law uh, to Moses uh, from up on uh, Mount, uh, Mount Sinai. Um, and so um, uh, in order to inherit uh, Abraham's promise of blessing, Paul argues one must simply follow Abraham's method of attaining uh, righteousness was since there was no law at the time God uh, made a promise uh, to him. Um, and of course that promise included uh, not only uh, land, but all of the uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of uh, his uh, descendants uh, that would come after him by, uh, by faith, uh, that all Abraham uh, did is believe the promise that God made to him. Uh, and so because uh, we, like Abraham, um, uh, are not uh, under the, uh, the law, we are able to be part of uh, the family of God and the, of the seed of Abraham uh, solely because of our uh, belief. Uh, and so if a person believes and is uh, faithful to God, then they will be made uh, righteous. Uh, justification actually is an act of grace uh, through faith, so that we are in a right standing uh, with God uh, just because uh, God has given us, uh, in fact, the uh, faith to believe uh, that what uh, Jesus accomplished uh, on the cross and his, uh, his dying and his burial and his subsequent uh, resurrection uh, was able to uh, pay the sin debt that we owed uh, God. And so uh, in the 19th uh, uh, verse, uh, Paul is raising the question, well, what was then the purpose uh, of the law uh, since uh, the law is really of none uh, effect? Um, and the, uh, the purpose of the, of the law uh, was a, um, it created a temporary uh, situation, if you will, uh, up so that up until the time that the promised seed, um, which of course uh, is uh, Christ Jesus, uh, came into the uh, world, um, there needed to be a, a system whereby people uh, would be able to um, know uh, what it was that they were doing, uh, be it right or wrong, and uh, that if, in fact, they were able somehow to uh, keep the whole law, uh, they would be in uh, right standing uh, with uh, God. The law uh, stimulates uh, faith in the promised uh, seed, uh, who, as uh, Jesus himself uh, pointed out, he didn't come to abolish the law, but he actually came to uh, fulfill uh, the law and that the law was uh, interim pending the coming uh, of the seed, which of course, as I mentioned, is, uh, is Christ. Uh, that's one of the um, uh, things that makes the uh, gospel according to Matthew uh, very important uh, in that uh, from the beginning of the uh, gospel, uh, Matthew uh, uh, writes uh, about the genealogy of, of Jesus 
um, and all his ancestry proving that he, in fact, uh, is uh, the promised uh, Messiah uh, prophesied uh, of old uh, throughout all of the uh, Old uh, Testament. And, uh, and so Paul also uh, uh, points um, that the law was uh, inferior um, because it was also given through a mediator, that mediator being, as I mentioned, uh, Moses, uh, this great uh, prophet. Um, mediator, if you're not somewhat familiar, is usually gets between uh, two parties sometimes. Uh, if there's controversy, uh, the mediator listens to one side, listens to the other side, and then makes a uh, ruling. Uh, in, uh, in this case, um, Moses um, was... Um, was the mediator between uh, God, whom God spoke to him uh, directly, and God's chosen uh, people, uh, the Jews. Um, but um, of course, um, ultimately, uh, as I mentioned, that proved only to be a stepping stone, uh, if you will, uh, until the time uh, that Jesus uh, came into the world and, uh, and then uh, fulfilled uh, the law. Um, so with the ultimate uh, uh, final agreement witnessed uh, by the mediator, uh, the Israelites uh, were contractually obligated to follow the law during that, uh, that time. Um, now in verse uh, 20, uh, Paul again uh, talks about the uh, uh, mediator and saying that the mediator uh, has to do with a uh, two-party uh, system um, and that, um, uh, that the two parties of the covenant uh, were supposed to walk uh, together um, uh, and, uh, and how that such a uh, uh, brutal fate would he, uh, await uh, them if they violated the, uh, the agreement. Uh, such was the system of uh, animal uh, sacrifices, uh, such that the uh, sacrificed uh, animals uh, were cut in two and laid uh, out a path uh, between them um, so that um, this, this system indicated what it was that they needed uh, to do um, so that they would be in agreement uh, with the uh, covenant that God had uh, made. Uh, that covenant uh, refers to the uh, law of uh, Moses. Uh, the Ten Commandments were, in fact, uh, the old uh, covenant uh, that God had with his people. Um, but if we read in the 15th chapter of the uh, book of uh, Genesis, uh, about the time God was making the promise um, to uh, Abraham that uh, ultimately would apply uh, to us even, uh, even today as uh, people who, uh, who want to be uh, in right standing uh, with God, um, there really wasn't any uh, need uh, for a uh, mediator uh, because what God did is he caused Abraham to fall asleep and as uh, Abraham uh, slept, uh, God himself um, uh, moved between uh, the sacrifices alone, uh, validating uh, the promise that he had made uh, with Abraham uh, by, him, by himself. Uh, and so uh, we are uh, comforted uh, today uh, to know that our uh, status as a believer, as an heir of salvation, uh, no longer uh, depends on anything that we uh, can do, uh, but it rests solely on God's grace through Christ. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord, goes right there. Now, verse uh, 21, um, Paul raises the question whether or not the law goes against uh, the promises uh, of God. While they don't go against the uh, promises uh, of God, uh, 
the uh, purpose of the promise, uh, of course, was to impart life, uh, eternal life, uh, if you will. And uh, the law was not capable uh, of, uh, of doing that. Uh, and so in order for the law to uh, negate the, the promise that God made uh, to uh, Abraham, uh, the law would have had to have been able to impart life. Uh, and of course, uh, that is not uh, that is not uh, possible. Uh, and so, um, uh, God didn't reveal His uh, law to us so that we could be confused, uh, fail at His regulations, and lose hope for salvation. Uh, God certainly would have provided a set of laws that could give life and righteousness if such a set of laws could have been. Uh, devised. Um, so the law then uh, must have had a different uh, purpose and as I've already uh, mentioned the purpose of the law was really uh, meant to point one uh, to, uh, to sin uh, which leads us into uh, verse uh, 22. Actually 22 and uh, 23 uh, together. Paul doesn't uh, actually uh, discount the law. Uh, respectfully, he refers to it as uh, scripture. Uh, so instead of uh, being able to impart the life as the promise that God made with Abraham was able to do, uh, the law of Moses uh, does uh, what it was designed to do, and that was uh, to condemn all humanity uh, under uh, under sin, uh, so Paul um, uh, uses um, somewhat of an analogy, uh, and he's uh, personifying uh, scripture, uh, namely the law, as a jailer uh, who keeps the condemned uh, secure in uh, prison. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the law wraps around uh, and snares and limits those uh, that follow it. Uh, but ultimately, as I keep mentioning, uh, the law was designed only to convict uh, humankind and to point uh, out what was, uh, what was sin. So the... Um, the images uh, of the law, because they uh, certainly wasn't capable of anybody from uh, able to uh, keep the law. Um, uh, somehow people could um, make the misunderstanding that the, um, uh, the law was given by a God who was uh, harsh uh, and cruel. Uh, in truth, uh, God's law in closes his people to keep them uh, safe. In other words, we would need to know uh, what, is, uh, what is wrong and uh, what is right, that the law reminds uh, them of the guilt of their sin, uh, but it also keeps them close to God so that when faith comes and then is revealed, uh, they can uh, partake of it. Uh, God ensnared uh, his people uh, in the law so that they could all be gathered together to ultimately receive the gift of Jesus Christ all at the same time. Uh, he further uh, personifies uh, the law uh, by uh, referring to it as a uh, uh, schoolmaster. Uh, and certainly a schoolmaster or a teacher, a pedagogue, uh, if you uh, will, uh, <clears throat> is one uh, who, would, uh, who would train um, someone uh, in, uh, train someone so that they would um, be able to uh, live a correct and, uh, and moral uh, life. Um, and so the law served to guide uh, those under it uh, to Christ for their justification uh, by faith. Uh, now the law is wise and useful, but it is not the end goal. It was always designed to lead followers to Christ. 
Okay. In other words, if in fact you don't know that you are a sinner, then you feel as though you're, there is no need, uh, as far as you're concerned, uh, of a savior. But if in fact you uh, are able to look at yourself the way uh, God does, uh, in that when you came into this world, uh, you came separated uh, from a holy God because of the uh, sin of Adam that every human being uh, then carries uh, uh, into this uh, world, um, you can then, uh, if you allow God to prevail upon your heart, um, can uh, see yourself the way God does and that you would uh, accept his free gift of uh, salvation um, so that you don't uh, uh, endure the uh, upcoming uh, wrath of God and uh, you are not eternally separated uh, from God uh, for all, uh, all time. Um, so since uh, Christ has come and fulfilled uh, the promise, uh, the law certainly was no longer uh, needed. Um, Paul points out in the uh, 26 uh, verse, um, who actually are the uh, children uh, of God? Um, I have often uh, in uh, the discipleship uh, classes uh, for those who are looking to unite with uh, this faith family of uh, Canaan, I often point out to them that um, uh, people outside of the family of God uh, feel as though they can uh, say with, I guess, a certain sense of truth that, well, we're all children of God. Uh, and uh, to look at things in a broad sense, uh, there might be uh, some element of truth uh, to that in that God uh, made mankind and that we are all uh, descendants of uh, not only the original uh, humans that God uh, created, uh, but of course, uh, ultimately and more recently from the uh, uh, eight uh, people that God saved uh, after the, uh, the flood. Uh, more specifically from the six individuals uh, who were the uh, sons and uh, uh, sons of uh, Noah and their, uh, and their wives, such that we are all uh, related, every human being on the face of this uh, earth. Uh, is, um, is is related. So in a very broad sense, yes, we are all uh, children of God in that regard and in that regard only. Uh, but Paul is very uh, quick to, uh, to point out but that we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. The gospel according to John uh, also uh, bears that out. Um, to be part of God's family, um, to be adopted into the family of God, uh, to be a part of the seed of uh, Abraham uh, who became um, righteous before God because of his belief in what God had uh, promised him and where he was to lead him. Um, it is only by faith in Christ Jesus that we are actually uh, children uh, of, uh, of God. Uh, through faith in Christ, both Jews and Gentiles uh, have equal privileges before God as his children. Uh, faith in Christ and not obedience to the law confers the privileges of a child of God. Okay, so that uh, Christians, all Christians, uh, Jews as well as uh, Gentiles, uh, are children of God himself because we identify ourselves with Christ himself who is God's only uh, begotten son. Uh, and so by faith we trust that Christ is the fulfillment of all God's promises to save his people. By faith, we see uh, him as the one true seed of Abraham, uh, the true and faithful Israel, and the prophet greater uh, than uh, Moses in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, so by faith, then, we follow Christ's example 
and identify ourselves with him becoming God's child just as much as Christ Jesus is himself. Uh, verse uh, 27 um, Paul uh, uh, writes, uh, let me just read that verse uh, to be clear. He said, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ uh, have put on uh, Christ. Uh, just like uh, in the old uh, uh, covenant, the uh, uh, system that God had set up uh, through the law of Moses, that circumcision uh, was a sign of entering into uh, the covenant of Abraham. Baptism uh, is the sign of uh, entering uh, the covenant of, of Christ. Um, I often uh, caution uh, people that uh, baptism in and of itself uh, does not uh, save. Uh, baptism itself is an outward sign of a change uh, by the grace of God that has taken place uh, within. Uh, and of course, this unity with Christ is tantamount to putting uh, uh, Christ on uh, figuratively as uh, we would a uh, garment. Uh, Paul uses the same metaphor uh, with the Corinthian church, uh, speaking of Christians putting on our eternal heavenly bodies and no longer suffering uh, here on earth. These human bodies that we now inhabit um, are not able to, uh, to live in, uh, in heaven. Uh, and this is why uh, when one uh, uh, dies who is in uh, Christ, uh, when uh, that body is then uh, raised to be reunited uh, with the spirit that had been uh, residing in heaven, uh, that glorified body, uh, like unto the body that Christ Jesus has himself, uh, will be flesh and bone but will not contain blood as our uh, bodies uh, do now. So uh, Paul in uh, the 27th uh, verse is not looking to the end times, uh, but to the moment of uh, salvation. Uh, he highlights the uh, need to make visible our uh, spiritual union with Christ here and now. And uh, certainly during the time of uh, Paul, uh, uh, clothes uh, really did uh, make the man, uh, as some people even feel uh, today, uh, with the um, uh, explosion, if you will, uh, how the, uh, the fashion industry is uh, worth billions and billions of uh, dollars. Um, but um, uh, so once the new Christian has put on Christ, uh, that Christian uh, becomes uh, uh, like uh, Christ. Uh, everyone who sees someone who is put on uh, Christ uh, should only uh, see the Savior. This is why our behavior uh, as Christians is so uh, important um, that we want uh, those who are outside of the uh, faith family of Christ uh, to see uh, the Christ that we serve and not focus on uh, we uh, human beings. Um, uh, when we put on Christ, uh, God himself looks at us and sees his sinless son who completely covers and pays uh, for our uh, sin. In the uh, 28th uh, uh, verse, uh, coming close to uh, closing, it's only the uh, 28th and 29th that we have uh, before us, uh, Paul uh, points out uh, that while there are actual differences between uh, nationalities and between uh, the different uh, genders, um, he is pointing out that in Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It only matters whether or not one is in Christ Jesus. Um, all are equally uh, sinners in need of a savior, and in Christ we are all one. In other words, we are the same. He says there's neither Jew nor Greek. Uh, 
there's neither bond nor free, a slave person, enslaved person, or a, a person who is free. There's neither male nor female, it doesn't matter. He says, but we are all one in Christ uh, Jesus. So for the purpose of pursuing salvation, it really doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, where you come from. It absolutely doesn't matter. The only thing that matters to God is whether or not we have accepted uh, his free gift of salvation uh, in the person of his son, uh, Jesus uh, Christ. And lastly, uh, verse 29 uh, reads, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So Paul has already really established um, that Christ is Abraham's only real uh, seed. Uh, and so if anyone actually uh, puts on Christ, uh, in essence, uh, becoming Christ-like, uh, that person also uh, becomes the real seed of Abraham. Uh, not that we are uh, genetically, uh, directly uh, connected to Abraham uh, himself, but because uh, Abraham exercised faith uh, and God counted uh, that faith that he exercised uh, as uh, the righteousness of God that he imparted to him, we, like Abraham, uh, become uh, the seed of Abraham uh, spiritually because uh, we, like Abraham, by belief alone, um, have uh, accepted what, uh, what Jesus. Uh, Abraham certainly lived at a time before Jesus walked upon the earth, uh, but as Jesus even uh, pointed out, uh, during his ministry, he said, before Abraham was, I am, uh, proving that he certainly is the God uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the flesh. Um, but um, certainly Abraham um, looked forward um, uh, by faith uh, to the promised uh, seed um, while he had... Um, uh, his nephew uh, Lot, who was born in his house, who he, he thought would be uh, his heir, um, uh, God certainly pointed out to him that that wasn't going to be his heir. Even his wife uh, tried to help God along by giving her handmaid uh, to Abraham uh, to raise up uh, seed. And that was also, Ishmael was also not the uh, son of uh, promise, but it was only uh, Isaac, who was born of the union between uh, Abraham and, uh, and Sarah, uh, was uh, the uh, promise uh, seed uh, was able to uh, come. Uh, so Abraham's uh, promise was inherited uh, by his seed, which of course, as I keep pointing out, uh, was uh, Jesus, uh, who is the Christ, not seeds, plural, as his uh, descendants, uh, but Christ, uh, who perfected Abraham's example of faith, uh, which would be credited uh, as uh, righteousness. And that, of course, uh, Christ fulfilled uh, the promise of Abraham uh, by his complete faith uh, in God. Plus, he also fulfilled uh, the law, uh, keeping him uh, pure. Uh, plus, he also is the only person who had ever or would ever uh, be able to uh, uh, do. Uh, he completed the law and shows us the example of uh, faith. And so when we hide ourselves uh, in him, uh, we too enjoy uh, the fruit of God's promise to Abraham of blessing, protection, and prosperity. So ends our lesson uh, for today uh, from the uh, letter that Paul wrote to the church uh, at uh, Galatia uh, entitled uh, Freedom and the Law. And uh, we look forward to uh, us gathering uh, together again next week if uh, God should uh, spare our lives, as I always uh, say. Um, whether our lesson will be the nature of Christian freedom, 
uh, also from the uh, epistle of uh, Paul to the church at uh, Galatia, uh, the fifth chapter, uh, verses 1 through uh, 15. Uh, the nature of Christian uh, freedom, uh, Galatians 5, uh, verses uh, 1 through 15. And so let me encourage you not only to uh, uh, be with us next week, uh, if God would uh, be so merciful as to allow us uh, to see it, um, but continue um, uh, watching uh, on your uh, uh, computer or on your uh, television, your fire stick, whatever you uh, have that enables you to uh, watch uh, YouTube. Um, our guest celebrant uh, in our worship service at uh, 10 o'clock today will be uh, none other than the uh, person of uh, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are celebrating uh, 90 uh, years of uh, Christian service uh, to our God through our uh, community work here in the uh, Harlem community in the uh, city of uh, New York. And so we pray uh, God's peace and uh, blessings upon you uh, throughout this upcoming week. Uh, and we look uh, forward to uh, seeing you again next week. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. May God richly bless you.